Hey, 42 here. When we talk about the origins of human flight, most of us automatically think of the Wright brothers, who first took to the skies in their modestly named Wright Flyer in 1903. But in reality, this historic flight was just one step on a long quest that mankind embarked on more than a millennium earlier. You're probably familiar with the story of Icarus, the boy who flew too close to the sun only to fall back down to earth and drown when his wings, which he and his father, Daedalus, had crafted from feathers and wax, disintegrated. It's a tale from Greek mythology that was probably conceived to teach us that pride comes before a very long, very deadly fall. But as it happens, Icarus and Daedalus's mad scheme to escape from Crete on jerry-rigged bird wings is actually surprisingly similar to some of mankind's real first attempts at flight, tower jumps. One of the earliest recorded tower jumps was made by Andalusian polymath and inventor Abbas ibn Fernaz in 875 AD, when he covered himself in vulture feathers strapped a carefully designed wing to each of his arms and launched himself from the tallest tower in Cordoba like an enthusiastic participant in one of those Red Bull flug tags. He's dead now, of course, but that's because he was born over a thousand years ago, not because he threw himself off a tower and tried to fly. Not only did he survive this daredevil stunt, some accounts from the time suggest he actually managed to sort of fly for a little bit before smashing into the ground at high speed and badly injuring his back. As a result, some historians credit Abbas ibn Fernaz as the first human being ever to fly. Though others believe his wing system may have acted more like a parachute, slowing him down just enough that he was able to successfully not die on impact with the ground. It's almost impossible to know for sure whether or not Abbas ibn Fernaz genuinely flew, and the same can be said for several other somewhat dubious records of human flight from the distant past. For example, around 400 years before Abbas's time, rumour has it that Chinese Emperor Wen Xuan decided to punish several prisoners by forcing them to leap from the top of a tower attached to very large kites. Most were killed, but one, Yuan Huang Tao, son of the Emperor of a rival dynasty, is said to have endured the punishment and lived to tell the tale. Then there's Ottoman aviator Ligari Hassan Chalibi, who, in 1663, is said to have strapped himself to 60 kilos of gunpowder in Istanbul and launched himself out over the Bosphorus in what might have been the world's first rocket ship. Whether or not these men were flyers, fallers or fakers is the subject of plenty debate even today. But these early pioneers, if you can call them that, made some of the first known attempts by humans to fly. And mankind has continued its assault on the skies pretty much ever since. If we want to look at the first confirmed flight of a human being, we need to fast forward a bit to 1783, when a paper manufacturer named Jacques Etienne Montgolfier ascended into the air over Paris. In a rather splendid looking flying machine, he had designed alongside his brother, Joseph Michel. Not an aeroplane, but a hot air balloon. To give you an idea of just how ridiculously limited our understanding of flight was at that time. Just before Jacques Etienne's historic voyage up and away, the Montgolfier brothers launched an unmanned test flight. I say unmanned, but that doesn't mean there weren't passengers. In fact, there were three. A sheep, a duck, and a rooster. This odd trio were sent into the skies over Paris for one simple reason, to find out if it was safe up there. 
The expectation was that the duck and rooster would survive the trip no problem, since both animals can fly without human intervention. Sheep, on the other hand, are absolutely pathetic flyers, and at the time it was assumed their physiology was pretty much the same as ours. So the idea was that if the sheep survived the trip, it should be safe for humans too. With the arrival of the hot air balloon, man had, if not exactly, conquered the skies, at least reached them. And that taste of freedom, of looking down on the earth far below, as though poring over a hyper-realistic map, proved addictive. Airships came next, the first of which, the Giffard Dirigible, waddled its way ponderously skywards in 1852. It seems the French had a bit of a stranglehold on aviation firsts in those days, as it was another Frenchman who designed and flew this one too, Henri Giffard, and Paris was once again the location for this historic moment. Both hot air balloons and airships are examples of what is known as lighter than air flight. As the name suggests, lighter than air vehicles achieved lift by virtue of weighing less than the total volume of air they displace, giving them positive buoyancy and making them float for exactly the same reason a cork floats in water. Lighter than air flight is fairly simple in principle, and compared to its cousin, heavier than air flight, it's fairly simple to achieve in practice too. Sky lanterns, you know, those paper contraptions with a candle inside that hippies like to release at festivals, have been around since at least the first century AD, and probably a few hundred years longer. All the Montgolfier brothers had to do to build the first hot air balloon was figure out how to scale things up a bit. Heavier than air flight, on the other hand, is another matter entirely. It isn't something most of us spend much time thinking about these days, but it is really kind of a miracle that a 500 ton commercial jet can haul itself six or seven miles into the sky and somehow stubbornly stay there. To make that happen, we humans had to overcome a frankly frightening number of scientific, engineering and technological challenges. These breakthroughs didn't come all at once either. The likes of Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo Galilei, Christian Huygens, Sir Isaac Newton, Leonard Euler, and many, many more of the brightest minds in human history provided vital jigsaw pieces of knowledge that would later help us solve the puzzle of flight. Arguably, the first person to fully understand how each of these pieces fit together was George Cayley. You may not be familiar with that name, but Cayley was one of the true pioneers of aeronautics. He was the first person to propose a fixed wing flying machine with separate systems for lift, propulsion and control, and he identified the importance of using cambered wings to generate lift. He also clarified the four forces that govern flight, weight, lift, drag and thrust. Despite his mastery of the principles, this last force, thrust, was causing Cayley a major problem in his quest for powered flight. He simply didn't have enough of it. And the technology of the day didn't offer any way to get more without dramatically affecting one of the other forces, weight. Or to put that another simpler way, steam engines were really bloody heavy. Cayley did still manage to build the world's first heavier-than-air flying machine, though, a glider that flew for the first time in 1853. But he firmly believed powered flight would be possible as soon as someone was able to design and build an engine that was both powerful and lightweight. And, as it happens, he was exactly right. In 1903, a few decades after the invention of the internal combustion engine, the Wright brothers made their now famous flight, paving the way for the development of modern aviation. It's worth pointing out that the duo actually hold a somewhat niche first in the world of human flight. As we've seen, they weren't the first to fly, nor were they the first to fly a heavier-than-air craft. 
They weren't even the first to fly a powered heavier than aircraft. That was another Frenchman, Clement Ada, who managed to skim along for some 50 meters at an altitude of approximately 20 centimeters in 1890. The official record held by the Wright brothers is the first controlled sustained flight in a powered aeroplane, which was admittedly an important step on our journey into the skies, but still just one step. When you consider that it took us around a millennium to advance from jumping off towers and hoping for the best, to building what was basically a giant sky lantern, and also hoping for the best, the speed of progress we've seen since the Wright brothers' first flight is actually pretty staggering. By the time the First World War came around, just over 10 years later, aeroplanes had advanced enough that plane-on-plane -plane dogfights became a central part of warfare, a status they've retained to this day. After the war, ex-fighter pilots and other aviation enthusiasts set about making the world seem like a much smaller place than it ever had before. John Alcock and Arthur Brown made the first non-stop Atlantic crossing in an aeroplane in 1919. And six years later, Charles Lindenberg became the first man to make the trip solo. The first non-stop flight across the Pacific came in 1931, and the following year, Amelia Earhart shot to stardom after becoming the first woman to cross the Atlantic alone. More on her in an upcoming video, by the way. Serious advances in the development of the jet engine began to be made around this time, though the first operational jet aircraft wouldn't take to the skies until the latter part of the Second World War. Whilst it may have been late to the party when it came to the war effort, this new technology would go on to spark the jet age, during which the jet engine completely revolutionized air travel and changed the world in the process. Jet-powered aeroplanes were able to fly much higher, faster, and further than traditional piston-powered planes, bringing just about the entire Earth within a single day's travel from any given point for the first time in human history. Not only that, but jet-powered planes were able to be far bigger, meaning flights could accommodate more passengers, bringing prices down significantly, and opening up the skies to more and more people. In 1961, humans conquered space, the final frontier, <coughs> sorry, when Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin took the Vostok 1 where no man had gone before. I'll stop now. Eight years later, Neil Armstrong became the first man in history to walk on the surface of the moon. It's kind of crazy when you stop and think about it. In the space of just 66 years, less than a human lifespan, we went from an almost unimaginably primitive aeroplane built by two eccentric brothers just about lifting off the ground to cruising through 239,000 miles of vacuum and landing on the moon. If your great or possibly great great grandparents happen to be born at just the right moment in history, they may well have been alive before we humans mastered powered flight and after we'd set foot on a world beyond our own. These days, flight has become an integral part of our world. Well, at least when Corona isn't effing everything up. Air travel has opened up our planet in ways our ancestors couldn't ever have dreamt of, allowing us to visit distant lands and exposing us to cultures we might once have only read about in books. Some of the pioneers in this video made more important contributions to that vision than others, but it's safe to say that between them, they have fundamentally changed what it means to be human. This hard-fought victory against gravity through sheer human tenacity, bravery, and ingenuity is arguably up there with man's greatest achievements. Or at least, that's how it looks to us. But imagine, just for a second, what this whole sorry story might look like from the perspective of a bird. 
To one of our feathered friends, watching Abbas ibn Fanaz tar and feather himself before leaping off a tower, half maiming himself in the process, this millennia-spanning struggle of a bunch of hairless apes just trying to get themselves off the damn ground is probably pretty hilarious. How many man-hours must we as a species have put into our quest to fly? Hundreds of thousands? Millions? And yet, your average African swallow, unladen or otherwise, can do things in the air that would make the world's most advanced fighter pilot wet himself whilst desperately fumbling for the ejector switch. Sort of put things in perspective, doesn't it? Thanks for watching. Check out my new podcast, Random Interesting Facts, available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Link in the description below. Thanks.